Yo. Yo. What is up? Are you on set? Um, I'm trying to add to that one. Oh. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> Steve. I've got three of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. What the? Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. Let me see. Well, anyways, while you figure that out, uh, we're trying I to figure it. out. There we go. We're trying <laughs> to talk about how DC, the Snyderverse, wasn't able to pull it off with their whole uh, big, bad everything they were going on with. And yet it seems as though the boys invincible and mm-hmm. Deadpool. Well, uh, Logan was able to do it. Why even Joker? I mean, Joker wasn't even really a great movie in my opinion, but it's still made a billion or more dollars. Yeah. So what is it with like, do people want dark and gritty films all of a sudden, or is it just, we're finally getting movies that are actually good for the masses and not just, you know, like these crazy uh, fan service films. Hello. What up? what up, Alex? It's a little complicated. It'll make sense. <laughs> um, pretty much like between 2017 and 2020, you have literally like the entire industry going through an awakening, you would say, right? Yeah. In the pandemic, that really took off the awakening. It's not good. So, I think what's happening, more on top of the pandemic, especially, they were just in the as much content as possible without thinking of a long growth. In other words, we got all money coming in, and we got all this cash audience, but we have the time to destroy everything where it's supposed to be. So, what should have to see what they do. And um, now, they did that for a couple of years, to start now if people rejected the crap that they're taking. Yeah. Because that, like, you're going to be taking all this. I can't even imagine to take a bunch of more. Just give. I'm going to just pop it off to about a hundred dollars, right? One hundred to take up two years of your life and have some popcorn and some snacks. One hundred. Now, in the past, was it that people had multiple income then? Where it was easy to go at the entity. Yeah. But now you have a situation where everything coming up, we just stood flat. Yeah, everybody else, everybody else to make new content. But the problem is, you just cut out. And that's the you have people here that don't have the time. Yeah. They don't. This is evident. So now you have the foggy and all these things that we want, especially Marvel, that we can yeah. get this wrong. Of whatever possible fans we have, the the hardcore people, which I keep explaining. So that is you. You should be shooting for all men, all ages, both in there. But it's all me into the entertainment. You see these features and these series. That people, that people, the problem was that the studio wasn't 
trying, but now the studio, so we don't, and we have to absolutely work for the dollars that we're getting from. So, no, so I, I the, totally understand where you're coming from. You see, bunch of shows being, I do show movies, being, and then looking at data like that before. Because you gotta understand, for like this, they're, they're so big, they don't care if they lose because yeah, they don't for sure. the boss so, make up the loss. But the yeah. ball, like I said, comes down to this if people keep their money up. I don't want to win the I, I find my skipping some and, and um, because I know that like the rubber. Like I yeah. see the second, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a both of them, and that's not <laughs> that's not touching a nut. Like you know, like bad dream, and then you stop oh That's like what I want. A lot of his like it was good hundred, but kind of you know, like I mean a dude. There is for the that all quick all it's up to me that I but I did hold on one second guys. Um yeah not only Content, the full no, I don't try to score a thing, but like it to have content, you know, talk to um, shows, movies, something that we've been in with. So, I'm yeah. enough, so trying to support that really is there. So, for they me, the crazy thing is. Is that DC is able to pull it off when it's an animated movie? But yeah, they can't pull it off when it's live action. And their animated movies are great fan service. They're amazingly well done, um, and they tell the stories that fans have always wanted to hear and see, and all of that. I like, they don't they don't have a problem with it, right? So when you have the ability to have these amazing films, have all this stuff going good for you, and then you can't turn all of that into live action, it's like, where's the disconnect here? Where where are we really losing it? And now with James Gunn taking over, you've got James Gunn, who we know loves to do goofy, but serious movies, um... And he loves to really dive into characters, but he also knows that you have to reach people who've been fans for 60 years, 40 years, 20 years, and are just coming to the theater today. Like you have to span that entire, the generational gap, so to speak. And honestly, Marvel did it for years. They did a very good job with it. Um, You had like, there's obviously Invincible that's done a very good job of really capturing that wide audience, even with how dark and gritty it is. But for again, for some reason, up until the Joker and arguably with Christian Bale's Batman, you weren't able to really dive deep into that. And Christian Bale's Batman, I don't know if you've rewatched it recently. It has not aged well. Like, uh, Dark Knight has aged very well. Joker was phenomenal in that. But Batman Begins and uh, Batman... Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises, thank you. Have not aged well at all. Yeah. Alex, what are your thoughts on it? On the Batman? Well, just all of this dark and gritty stuff in I think comic book movies. It can work 
in my opinion. Uh, like I know the boys does it. Uh, Gen V with the spinoff. Deadpool has done an Invincible. Yep. Uh, from what I've noticed from watching those shows and the two seasons of Invincible um, and Deadpool movies, is that it works, but there's also that comedic effect. Yeah. Also, and they're like, the Deadpool didn't take themselves too seriously, so it was fun for to watch while also it being darker. You know, not make sorry. Um, and then, uh, like with the Zack Snyder's um, Justice League, didn't really work because when I watch it, like I, I like parts of it, but I can understand. But it took itself too seriously, yeah. In my opinion, like when you mentioned the DC animated movies, they do it, but there's also some humor, yeah. Like like uh slight humor in those animated movies as well. Like when especially when you get to Teen Titans, like you have Garfield, um, Beast Boy like as a comic relief, but it doesn't do it uh, it doesn't overdo it while he can all while he can also be serious. So you can't lean one way or the other. You can't be too serious. But you also don't want to be too goofy. You need a mixture of it. And yeah. I think the boys have done that really well. And they take on serious issues, and also I don't see like there's really an agenda in there, True. and they can also have fun with it along with Deadpool. Well, Deadpool just has fun with it in regards to it, while also tackling <laughs> it, and the and Invincible. That's and it's also relatable too for the Invincible coming of age. Yeah, um, like him being a teenager, uh, an adult, young adult trying to navigate the world with superpowers. And everything, but that could also, excuse me, work for people who are coming of age, dealing with stresses of college, growing up, not knowing what to do with their lives. So that's relatable. And while there's also humor and lighthearted stuff in there, so that's why I think it could work. But like again, with the Justice League, no, not me, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's over here whining at me. She wants my food. But she can't have any. <laughs> uh, she already ate. Um, and what was I saying? Yeah, and like the Dark Knight. Yes, even though there wasn't really a lot of comedy in the Dark Knight, that one worked because one, it was really well written. I like. I think another thing is you need to have really good writing to make it like all serious. Yeah. Uh, that was a perfect film. The Joker 2 was good. A T.O. Uh, was really good because it was also serious, but the writing there was good and it, the performances were great, was spot on. Hey, yeah, boy. Mainly, it's just you can't take yourself seriously on everything. Like That's my opinion, what I've been noticing and rethinking yeah. the movies I've seen over the years. Uh, yeah, like Dark Knight Rises. I love the movie. I so it still has a special place in my heart. But oh, for sure. There are things that yeah did not age well. A lot of plot holes. A lot of things they could have done differently. Yeah, and then yeah. So yeah, that's those are my opinions. One of the things that I've heard um, over the years is that. There's never been an amazing um, Batman in the sense where he's truly been able to personify Bruce Wayne and Batman as one actor. I agree. Christian Bell got pretty close. Even Robert Pattinson. I know that's crazy. And I know that a lot of people are not going to agree with that. But Robert Pattinson did a really good job of treading that line. And honestly... He's up there with Christian Bale for me. I think he is one of the best Batman we've ever gotten. I agree yeah, with I you think... on that one. I was so hesitant on watching that movie. Right? I was so apprehensive. Like, oh, Robert Pattinson, he's not a good fit. Like, um, I don't think he could do this. Like, after, like, Christian Bale. 
I thought Christian Bale did a really good job, and like also like like the voices and everything like with Kevin yeah. Conroy and the games how well, Tim right, Conroy so that was portrayed. But Robert Pattinson surprised me in that movie. He really did. Uh, Alex, you've got a question because I've never watched Gen V. Did Gen V turn out good? Oh yeah. Oh hi, Nana Kanchu and Mark Spector Comics. I'm sorry, I didn't see those. You're comments. good. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, as good as the boys? No, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, is there an agenda in there? Yes. Yeah. But it wasn't. When, it wasn't like. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it just I it was good. It was fun to watch. There was some there was good humor in there. Uh, it kinda takes getting used to since you're like if you're really used to the boys, all the characters, you're kinda like, Oh, you really uh fell in love with them and everything. Uh but yeah, it, it's good. I liked it in my opinion. Um I wish there was more that they delve into. Yeah. But yeah, just be aware, like there is some agenda in there about uh, certain things that it is plain, it is blatantly there. You could tell. Oh, for sure. Like they, it's not, it's almost at the point of almost being overwhelming, but not. But if you could get past that, the story there is good. I like the, the direction in which they were going with it. And there was like a shock. There was like a couple of twists in there that mm, were good. Were I would I feel were executed pretty well. So yeah. if you haven't seen it and you like the boys, I will give it a watch. I was apprehensive Isn't about it. it. I was very apprehensive about it too when I saw it when I saw the trailer. Um, Cause see, the spinoffs could be hit and miss, honestly. For but sure. I'm glad I gave it a watch. Um, yeah. I'm looking to see where they'll go with season two. Do you know what's been shockingly gritty and I wasn't expecting it is what? X-Men 97. Oh, damn it. I yeah, you know what? Watch it. I have a, yeah, <laughs> you have a great, like, I'm going to watch. Like I, I right up, it. even in episode one, it was just, it was shockingly gritty. It was fun. I mean, like everything that you're saying, Alex, is yeah. exactly what that X-Men 97 stubby. did was that balance. And there's no agenda behind it. It's let's tell this story. Let's have fun with it. Let's enjoy doing it. Um, if there is an agenda, I haven't been able to pick up on it yet. And I mean, usually that's one of the first things that is blatantly out there. Yeah. And I, I'm on, I'm current with it right now. And seeing all of these episodes lead up to each other and the way that they play on each other and the way that it, like the way they did it kind of plays with your emotions because you want to see what happened, but they go, they have a side event. Then they've got the main event and then they go back to the side event just to really screw with you. Oh. And I'm like, God damn it. I want like to know what happened after episode that. five, but like every like episode six is everything leading up to episode five from a different perspective. So it's really interesting and really cool the way that they're doing it. And again, you can do that both in an animated show and being a TV show instead of a movie. One of the movies that I feel was like an originally woke movie was Watchmen. Watchmen was woke for its time. It came out and again, it was major fan service. Yes, it was, was let's a... tell the story about the Watchmen, and if you don't know it, you're not going to enjoy it. That was that's is a perfect example. I'm glad you brought that up. And yeah. like fan service, yes, because it was literally uh, with some exclusions, shot for shot from the graphic novel. Yep. And that I honestly think that was a perfect example of follow the storyline. Don't like uh, derive from it. Don't try to make it your own. Like the story's there, it's yeah. good for you, and it works. And I agree, it was work for its time. It was tackling a lot of issues. Um, that was happening with Vietnam, uh, yep. Nixon, the West Scare. As, as I grew up uh, watching it, when I became a historian, watching it again after watching it when I was a kid, 
I learned to appreciate it more. And yeah, it's time. And they even tackle, um, like, even though it's like a short thing in the beginning, like, they also ta- uh, tackle, tackle uh, homosexuality, like lesbians, mm-hmm. and how like they were perceived. Like, that small shot. Um, What's up, Porters? Hi, Porters. That small Stop. shot of them being murdered and what's written on the walls. Yeah. That was like a general saying what it was there, but it was perfect that that shot was in there. Even though it's not addressing sure. it, like you have to spend like 10 minutes on it. That is all you need to see. Yep. And I like how they addressed the Cold War and like the events of Vietnam and how that affects everyone. Watchmen is a perfect example of that. I'm glad you brought that up. And again, it was gritty, but it was too like like I said, it was too much fan service. It didn't allow for people who had no idea what it was to get into it because as soon as people were like, "Oh, this is a DC comic book," oh well, if it's a comic book, I'm not going to enjoy it because I don't enjoy reading comic books, so I won't like it. And it's yeah. like it, it's not. It is a DC comic book. It is meant for comic fans of the comic book. Um, it. Don't get me wrong, it has its merits. It was well done in certain aspects, the same way that you were saying about certain parts of the Snyderverse. And that is a Zack Snyder movie. But there are just so many little things about it that over time it's like, it's too, like, it feels too, way too long. It feels drawn out. I kind of agree with what Knight of Conscience was saying, where he says it's boring and slow. I don't feel that it's boring because, again, I'm a history buff just like you, Alex, yeah. but it is slow. There yeah, is a and, lot of build up for not a lot right? of payoff. There's even a longer version that I have yet to see. I wouldn't want to get to it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the longer version. I want to see what they have. I watched <laughs> the longest. The first time I watched it, um, you actually, watched it? it was probably about five months ago when I first watched it. It was the longer version on HBO Max. Wait, HBO Max has a long version? Because I tried to find it. and it... I believe so. No, they have the regular version. Oh, then it just felt like the long version. It's already times old. Look, like, I hate the show. And it's the movie I want. But I want the comedy. Why? Why are you don't no one's gonna watch. you're gonna take a movie. now see especially ninety talking about you start now like you you see what happened why is good that's what's so you you pump it out that I'm telling you I talked to on a regular and um you we good to go. Got it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Getting ready, though. So, they were just... But, um... Thank you, though. Um, pretty much... It's now... It's fucking time. They can't get no more... There's no more... No more free money. Everybody's back. Pandemic was... Everybody lost. He's, he's back. So, now, you know... Is in the free money to work. So I feel up to a lot of people want that creative as well. Now this is going to be the best time to be shows you in 2020. Even predicted 2025. Not everything, but but significant change. Like I said, we already saw for sure. You'll see. It's hard to see What's gonna go down? Which, um, that the quad choice it has to go. They lost. Then how many? They lost. Um, they lost over six subscribers. What from eight to lose it to six million? Having about about now. So you get the higher the pension, but eight million. Subscribers. And you're down to two. Now, three things shake. Go back to yeah. free the both. But I think it's the the comment that's out by this people because I know 
Four Fat Two, and I'm like, I was excited. Disney, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Thank. We all know well, that things have to change over the years. Like, there's got to be a changing of the guard at some point. Obviously, yeah. this happened just recently. I mean, nobody yeah. saw streaming services coming about 20 years ago. Cable was the wave of the future. Everybody yeah. knew that cable was going to be the biggest thing, the next best thing, and it was going to be, you've got a thousand channels. Like, I remember hearing, oh, you've got a thousand channels now. It, five million of them were duplicates of the other ones, or yeah. it, one was the HD version of another one that was the or SD variation, version. Like, like now yeah. Cartoon Network West, <laughs> Cartoon Network East. Yup, and then you've <laughs> got, um, you had all the music channels, which just play music 24-7, and that was like 200 channels in of itself. Yeah. And I was just like, that's, congratulations, you've got a thousand channels. But now between Pandora, Spotify, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Netflix, Music. Amazon yeah. Prime, Amazon Music, uh, Max, like all of those different streaming services, that doesn't even come close to how much cable costs. Like I remember oh. when I was growing up, cable was like $130 a month, not including Wi-Fi. And now you add in like inflation and all of that. I can only imagine what the same cable package I had as a kid growing up cost today. To be, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too. Because I remember I used to be with Xfinity. Yep. Paying all, almost a little over $200 for the Wi Fi and everything. And that's the only reason why I switched to streaming with my family <laughs> because it was cheaper and we pay less than. Well, less than that, because I pay less than, I pay like $90 for internet, because I'm with AT&T now. And yep. I got the highest one well, at the time. Uh, and it's still good. And it comes with HBO Max for free with yeah. it. So, and with everything on the stream, yeah. it's less than like $150 compared to the over $200. And it was going to increase too. Yep. Uh, and that I was without imagine, DVR and all. Yeah, like, I can't imagine how much yeah. it costs now. Like, yeah, like it's cheaper and it's dominating the market with the streaming. So, I am so sorry. They need me. So this was a working next week. So we'll be doing the full show. Sounds good. Good night. Okay, bye, Spider Slayer. See ya. Yeah, it, it's insanity. Like. Whenever, um, whenever my parents were on hard times money wise, cable was always like the first thing they got put on the back burner for that month. Mm -hmm. So you knew like that cost a shit ton of money. Yeah, it has always cost a lot. Yeah, uh, to get those channels and everything. Yeah, I I was very fortunate. Not thinking about it now, we were fortunate enough to have cable. Because think about it now, because as a kid, you don't really see it or really notice it. Yep. How many people, I mean, people say, like, oh, you have cable? Like, oh, I wish I had cable. Like, now thinking about it, I was like, yeah, not a lot of people had it because it was expensive. It was considered yeah. a luxury to have a cable box or even a satellite dish. Like, that. Did you ever see the ads growing up, like, stealing cable is illegal? Yes. Having a black box is illegal, like stuff <laughs> I like remember that. that. <laughs> and now <laughs> it's so funny because now you've got password sharing and there's yeah. no way to crack down on that. Like yeah. they've been trying, but well, so I have Apple well, TV. Hulu, Hulu Apple TV. Did that. Yeah, Hulu did. Because the... Apple TV can be moved yeah. because it's so small that yeah. streaming services believe. That it's a mobile device. So <laughs> Netflix, I can watch Netflix on my Apple TV, even though it's not on the same Wi-Fi as my grandmother's. I can still use Netflix. Um, Hulu did crack down. You just with can't the watch live TV. Live TV. Yeah, yeah. That's what my sister did when she moved with her fiance. They were trying yep. to watch it because they didn't want to pay for another account because we had live already. But it's like, oh, they worked for a while, but it's like now we got the notification yeah, like you can't watch live TV because it's not in the same error code 
Yep. <laughs> yeah, that that oh zip code, zip code, there we go. Yeah, that that was like interesting. Yeah. And Netflix tried to do that, right? They tried to like put a limit. They did there was a lot of stuff that Netflix tried to do. Um it, it's got to be on the same Wi-Fi at least. It has to hook up to the home Wi-Fi, I want to say, at least once a month. Yeah. Or something like that. And, I mean, I had planned, like, if this is a legit thing, I'll go bring my Apple TVs over to my grandmother's and do that. If you really need me to do that, then I'll do it. But yeah. Family I, visit each month. I haven't had an issue. <laughs> no, no I was like, oh... Like, it's so nice that you come visit me every month. Like, yeah. Like, you must really love me. Like, yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. The funny thing is I'm looking at uh, TV prices right now, yeah. and it's like $80 a month for TV and then, like, another 50 for Wi-Fi. And if you have TV and Wi-Fi, you have to get phone service. This is through Spectrum. So I can only imagine what it adds up to because obviously they don't want to tell you a specific price right off the no, website. Sometimes they don't even show you at all. Yeah. Until, like, I'm going to add this, this, and this. And then it's when the checkout comes when you already put your card in. Well, so yep. I think before you put your card in, like either before or after, before you actually have to click the final. Like, oh, snap. This shit's going to yeah. cost like 300 something dollars. <laughs> like, with that shit, I might as well just get a new computer and it gets streaming yep. it come out cheaper <laughs> yeah we went with uh green light and the only stipulation is you have to buy your own uh router oh. so by buying our own router and paying whatever it is uh we were paying a month at the time it was three hundred dollars cheaper for the year instead wow. of having the other service and wow, that was dude. with paying for our own hardware plus the monthly fee. Oh, that's like good. The, that $300 barely scratched the surface of um, all of the money we were spending a month on the other yeah. service that gave you the router. And the router was shit. I mean, they give you the ones that are typically bottom of the barrel. But... Yeah, th that's how it usually goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just fortunate enough that I don't have a router anymore. I just pay for internet that, and then the streaming. We went totally internet wise. Nice. streaming because there's just too much yeah what about um venom 3 are you excited about that i know like that's going to be a much grittier film i hope are you excited so. about that one i'm excited to do it i i really like venom i i know people like to like shit on it but yeah. to be honest out of all the sony ones besides like spider-man and stuff i mean like the other characters Venom has stood its ground, even with the second one, even though there could have been stuff different with the second one. Yeah. It's still better than what Sony was pushing out. Yep. We had like Morbius, uh, Mountain Web. What else have they done? Things. Those are the ones, right? Only ones Morbius that proved out. exactly your point, though, of it has to balance between funny and gritty. And the writing has to be there. And yeah. Morbius, no, there was no balance and there was yeah. no writing. I, I I, honestly feel, truly feel to this day that, I think we talked about it too, uh, it was the reshoots. They had to fit with yeah. No Way Home. I feel like they there is footage out there. It was a different, completely, completely different movie. I'm pretty sure there was. Even a script, when it was supposed to come out before Far From Home, because it was yeah. originally supposed to do that, I feel there was a better movie that was I, supposed I to be think, made. I think COVID screwed up a lot of movies. Yeah. Thor so, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Um, the James Gunn issues that push back volume three to behind mm. Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. Um, like j There was just a bunch of little things that ended up happening. Obviously, COVID's kind of a big thing, but a yeah. bunch of things that ended up happening that just completely changed the trajectory of everything pretty much post end game. Yeah. And there's probably I mean, an alternate universe where yeah, some of the stuff probably was much better <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, back to the thing. Yeah. I'm excited for Venom three. I want more information. Uh, ah, I speak to the information about it. 
Um, I just hope it's good because I know there's always a trope, not a trope, but always a thing was with any movie of any genre. The third movie is a make or break it. Yeah. Because it's hard to, like, I didn't realize how hard, like, how hard it is to get, like, a, see, like, tr- like a trilogy out or even, um, like, a series of different movies, a franchise. So, yeah. Like, I started really delving into, like, movies, the history of movies and production-wise and, like, what the mindset of if they want to do a franchise. It's the third movie that either makes or break it because, yeah. like... Yeah, sometimes the second movies they may flop. It's like, oh, people forgive that. Or if it's really good, how are you going to top it off? Yep. Just like with the Dark Knight Rises, how are you going to top the Dark Knight? Um, yeah, the third movie. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of like afraid for. Like, are they going to flop? Or is it going to be really good? I just hope it's on the good side, and. Not yeah. those really good writing that they just put their all into this third one. I, I hope because I mean, like you said, it's hard to get a trilogy made. As soon as you said that, I'm thinking Grown Ups. Grown Ups had an amazing first movie, oh, pretty yeah. good second movie. It's Adam Sandler, so you really can't do much wrong. But then there's never been a. Uh, a uh, sequel to the second one. There's never been a number three. Yeah, because it's well. Yeah, I agree. It was good, but you know, because Adam, because like it's kind of hard with Adam Sandler because he tends to do the same. I'm not bashing on him. I think I think yeah. he's a good actor. He could do it, and he employs his friends. But if he for his movies, like I'm fine with him doing like his same shtick and everything, like in different movies. But if it's going to be like a trilogy. You're gonna to have to need to change it up a little bit. Yeah, uh, you gotta like, push the limits. Push it there. Don't do your same basic formula again. I'm not bashing on him. I think his stuff is funny and good when it, when it's done right. And I know oh, he could do. Sure. Se- I know he could do serious roles, roles, and um, yeah. For that, you just needed like the first two felt like the same, but just the kids growing up. <laughs> Oddly enough, yep. yeah, the grown ups. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was that show from him? It was about diamonds or something? Was it on Showtime? Uh, I or don't Apple remember. TV? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I, I do. A, like, I know he was praised for that, and I even saw clips of that. Like, wow. I'm not expecting I don't to remember have, what like, it was a, called. A good, like, uh, serious wall of his. Yeah. I know he has range when he really wants to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He's, one, he's one of the best actors out there. Yeah. And... He not only has range of the types of characters he can play, but he has range of what he can do on a movie. Like he's yeah. able to produce. I'm pretty sure he's directed a couple of movies. I know he's written a bunch. Like oh, it's uncut the gems. guy knows how to play the game. I guess yeah. is the best way to put it. And when he, I mean, he doesn't really change anything up. Like I said, like yeah. it works for him. I mean, he knows like, yeah. if it's going to be his movie, he's going to have fun with it. Yeah, like yeah, grown ups. Uh, were they ever planning to make a third one? I don't, I don't know. Um, I do know, like, one of the sequels that I've always wanted is a sequel to Funny People. Um, Funny People. Which was a much more serious role for him. Is that, is that a, when he was, di- he, he was dying? Like, yes. he was terminally ill? Yep. Oh, I he was a comedian who was dying um, and needed a new writer and basically took this guy under his wing, Seth Rogen, uh, had Jonah Hill in it, like it was, it was star, it was packed. Was it Eminem um, up in that and coming movie? stars at the time? What was that? Was it Eminem in that movie? Or was that? I believe so. Movie? Yeah, because you're saying he was yelling at someone like "You're not funny." Yeah, something. I remember seeing that clip. And, but yeah, I saw. I thought that was a pretty good movie. I've yet to go yeah. back and watch the full version. I almost forgot about it, but think now I'm gonna put it in my watch list. It's always been one of those ones this that's escaped me. Um, I feel like it's never made it to a streaming service for long. It was on Netflix for a very short amount of time. When I found it, it was already kind of like on that, hey, Netflix is going to be removing this movie in, on this date. And I'm like, well, shit, how long has this been here? And I just didn't notice there. Is it really just not popular? Yeah. Um, 
and it's hard to find in the wild on DVD or Blu-ray back in the day when before streaming. Um, I had one copy, and when that one uh, got ruined, it was just it got scratched somehow. Yeah. I struggled to find another one, so I just kind of gave up on it. I was like, "This is a really great movie. I love it in my collection of movies, but don't know that I need it." Yeah, it's it's on like Hulu, YouTube, Amazon, yeah. but the thing is. Is premium uh, yep. subscription, meaning you have to have an add-on to that. So yeah, exactly. It is hard, but the only th- way is the only streaming thing that is on is on Stars. That's the okay. only thing that is. Ac- if you have a su- subscription to Stars, you can watch it. Yep. I can't remember where I watched. I th- I honestly want to say the last time I watched it, it was on Netflix. Um, yeah. but yeah. Anyways. So there's there's that side of it where it's very hard to make that trilogy. We we hoped and kind of knew that Venom would be getting a trilogy. Yeah. But now Sony has this rare opportunity where they've tried twice to make Spider-Man movies without Spider-Man. Yeah. And failed twice. Morbius yeah. failed and Madam Web has failed. Yes. Still, I'm still waiting for Madam Web to come out on streaming because I have not seen it yet. I haven't. I didn't want to pay for. It. I thought like, you know what? I'm going five dollar Tuesdays, but then I thought like, you exactly. Know what? Uh, I've been hearing a lot of things about it. My my sister saw it with her fiance with, uh, on Valentine's Day because they they like going to me, so they didn't mind. Yeah. Uh, but they said like, I asked her like, in Helica, is it worth it? Like, <laughs> and she's like, it was good for what it was. But yeah, when I see it again, no, I was like, oh, okay, like, cause she knows I like like comic movies and everything. And that it, should I waste my money on it? She's like, no, you shouldn't. I was <laughs> like, okay, thank you. I trust my sister's opinion because she's very straightforward and she knows like what's good and what's not. Yeah, because if something she doesn't like, she doesn't watch. Or it's something that never interests her, she won't watch it. So, yeah, like. It- they have this opportunity to do it. And that's why I said all th- they should just go all in. Even if everything else sucks. Just like I think Craven the Hunt is gonna suck, honestly. I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. I then, think but, it's gonna flop just as hard as Madame Webb and Morbius did. Yeah. Like if anything, like if they're gonna get with the Sony Verse or well, anything, or just keep one of them, at least keep Venom. Yeah. Just her I don't think Tom the- Hardy wants to continue to play it, though. I know. I feel that, too. I think he said that, too. Uh, I forgot. Maybe he did or not. Maybe I was imagining it. Anyway, but yeah, just put everything to this third movie. Go out with a bang. If it, yep. If they start saying, like, oh, this, everything's flopping, but we see Venom doing it. And if Tom Hardy doesn't want to do it, let's send him off with a bang, a great movie a gritty movie a true venom movie and that'd be amazing i would love to see like a like the, and like an actual spider-man movie quality venom if that if that makes sense yeah yeah despite the multiverse saga presenting the perfect opportunity for sony's corner of the marvel universe to make its way into the mcu it sounds like the upcoming upcoming Venom threequel will, sadly enough, uh, mark Hardy's last time playing the t- titular anti-hero. Yeah, and that's mainly why it's called Last Dance. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I remember that. Uh, hearing about that, yeah, because they teased him like in end uh, in game. No, no, no. Uh, no way home. No way home. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh shit. Uh, Venom is there. I was so I happy to see him. I was like, oh my god. Even at the end of even at the end of Venom 2 remember like when he glitches out a little bit mm-hmm. and then he licks the Spider-Man? Yep. Uh, I was Talks like, about oh. the hive. like The hive mind like yep. Noel coming in. I was like, oh shit. I was so happy. <laughs> but yeah, and I, I think I just think Marvel's kind of all over the place, so I think like, yeah. and Hardy's getting older too. He probably wants to branch out, do yep. other things. Like Hardy's Tom Hardy's an amazing actor. I love him. He's done a lot of. He has super a lot of movies. range. Yeah, like 
it, so it think, is time for him to take that step into the next part of his career, in my yeah, opinion. I, like, I feel like you want to focus on something else. Yeah. Uh, like, if, it, if Marvel just had a plan everything and so like waiting like so many years or this long just to connect something else. Yep. So I feel like they're taking much longer than they did before to try to connect pieces of the previous movies or shows sometimes. Yeah. I would love sorry, go ahead. I was saying I think if they were like kind of struck a little bit more short today like they were before. Yeah. I think Hardy and we would have gotten into Venom three and we could have gotten into again, I know COVID took a hit and everything, but and he as long as like there was more momentum and everything spark interest in a lot of things. Yeah. I would love to see Secret Wars. Yes. And Spider-Man 4 yes. have a whole new Eddie Brock. Yeah. Who would you want as Eddie Brock? He'd be back from Secret Wars the same way he did in the comics. Yeah. And that ends up being Spider-Man 5. Ooh. And then you have Venom take over um, the symbiote. Or Venom take over Eddie Brock's body in the six one six universe. Yeah. Um. And then go from there. And I want to see an older, mature Eddie Brock. I want to see him with a son. Yeah, and Dylan Brock. You can age that up, and you can have Dylan. You can have Codex. You can create Null. You can have like all of this stuff can go on at the same time because we know that Marvel. If they continue the MCU, obviously they who knows what they'll do over the next five to ten years. Yeah, um, we are four years away from twenty years of the MCU. God damn! Right? <laughs> damn, I'm all fucked. I remember when it started. <laughs> God. Um. We didn't make you feel old, Chris. <laughs> sorry, I I had to. So I. Like there's just, there's so much that's gonna happen over the next over this year and next year and then 2026 that's gonna lead into a whole new version of the MCU. Yeah. That they want to do street level, or Kevin Feige said he wants to do street level, he wants to do Avengers level, and he wants to do cosmic level. So at the street level, you've got Kingpin right now. He's the big bad of the street level. Yeah. Daredevil um, with the street level. Yep. Uh, I heard that they might bring the Punisher back in the new Dale Dever series. Punisher has already been confirmed. Oh, shit, um, yay. They, yep. I want them to bring back Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. I do too. But, and I, Iron Fist, if they Iron Fist better Iron Fist has been rumored to be a female Iron Fist. So more, I guess that's more comic accurate. I never got yeah, into that's Iron true. I think his daughter, his daughter yeah. becomes it. But just better writing and better like fighting sequences. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Well, last week, uh, Mike was talking about that. He said that the guy who played Iron Fist was not a fighter. He physically could not learn to fight. Daniel he did Finn, not learn yeah. to fight. He would not learn to fight. Like, all of this stuff. And I'm like, well, then why would you even hire him? Just because he kind of looks like the Iron Fist from the comics or because you think he'd do so well he, in everything else? Was he a pacifist? Or like, Did you, like, flat out just, like... he? He, oh, he just, just struggled didn't... to learn the choreography. Oh, and he just didn't want to learn? It uh, Apparently, even when they taught him, he just, he he struggled at every turn. Like, the guys who were teaching him, they're trying their best. They're trying to teach him how to do it. And it just, everything went straight over his head. And, I mean, you can only do so much with that. That's why I guess a lot of the scenes, um, when you see, like, a punch coming, is it's just the hand. It's just the fist. Yeah. So, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I like. I'm hoping because Fantastic Four is going to have Galactus. That's a cosmic earthly level threat. Oh my god, is he going to be my favorite character, the Cloud? Not the Cloud. Damn, apparently it's going to be legit Galactus. Oh man, everyone was looking forward (laughs) to the Cloud. I was looking forward to the Cloud. And then I think the cosmic. I hope everyone um, knows I'm joking. I don't want to get hate. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cosmic entity, the cosmic big bad, will either be high evolutionary Ooh, or shit. because Kang, Jonathan Majors is not getting jail time, he could still play Kang. Well, I thought they fired him, though. I thought it was they, official. 
they let him go, but I mean, they've hired people back like James Gunn for things. I think giving but him James a second Gunn chance. Was convicted of anything. True. Yeah. I mean, it is owned but, by Disney now, and Disney has a huge thing with the reputation. Exactly. Yeah, um, and when he was, and, and Jonathan Mars was convicted, though, right? He was convicted, but he wasn't sentenced to jail time. Yeah. He's sentenced to basically getting help for his anger issues. Yeah. But the fact um, that the key word is he was convicted, so that yes. I don't think Disney's going to want him back because yep. of that. But who knows? It, we'll who see. Knows? I mean, in my personal opinion, I would love to see them take with Deadpool coming in. Yeah. Take the original actor of Ferrodi from Iron Man One. Oh, Thomas Howard. Put him in the role of Kang, and then all the Deadpool jokes would be right there, right for the making. Like every fourth wall break you could possibly do. Yeah, everything like that would just be amazing to watch and see. It would. Not that I think he'd come back to the MCU. I really like Unless that would be a tough paid. sell. But yeah, he'd have to get paid real well. Because that was the issue when he yep. left. Or they let him go. He he wanted more money than what they were willing. And I mean, you're, you're the backup of the main character. You're not getting paid Robert Downey Jr. money, Iron Man money, for being James Rhodes. No, no matter who you are. And also, I don't think they'll bring him back because it's Disney-owned. And I mm-hmm. know he has had a history of violence against women, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I I didn't know that until my mother told when we were talking about it, and like she told me about that. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. But hmm. I was like, if they really want, if they if Disney is like want to keep their like reputation pure and with their actors and everything, like, yeah, I know it's been a while, uh, quite like years, but that's still there. It was covered and everything, so. Yeah. Thinking about that little image of everything, like, maybe they probably won't. But you never know. They might just bring them back for like that, like you said, the funny jokes. True. I I would appreciate that funny those funny jokes, those punchlines, everything, because that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. But or even bringing back Edward or even Norton. a variant, like just a quick cameo, a different version of Kang with Deadpool standing right there. Yeah. That would be funny to see, but. Yeah, I'm really. It, it's coming out this summer, right? Yep. Is it May or June? Uh, Deadpool is July 19th. Oh, July. I want to say. Ooh. Uh, July 26, twenty four. I'm really looking forward to that. I really want to see it. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> Did you see? And have you ever seen those posts? Like Deadpool's making the new popcorn buckets. Yeah. <laughs> like some of those, like the Wolverine and Deadpool, the popcorn on the yep. mouth. And then, I've seen the one where it's the mouth and it's um the Dune. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Dune popcorn bucket as Deadpool's mouth. <laughs> yeah. I was like, God damn, they're really gonna have fun with this. Because uh-huh. when I saw the Dune one, I was like, You really approve this? And it, right. it's, it's kind of weird. Like it, it, so many levels, like it, it's, it's weird creepy. to the point of who backed this up in yeah, the talks. Even the design, like let's say the design was different, everything, but the fact that the little plastic little hairs or teeth that yeah. can creep people out and like turn people off, like to buy it, huh? For buying it, like, yeah, because people are like, yeah, because it's creepy, like just feeling that when you're getting your popcorn. And also, how well does that work? Like, popcorn is not like other items where you can just kind of pull it out. Like, if you pull it out and it hits everything, it will just fall apart. Yeah. Like, oh. And you can't <laughs> even get that much. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, don't know. <laughs> I thought that was funny when they brought the Dune out. The Dune popcorn buckets. And I saw another post. I'm not going to, like, explicitly say it's like, Oh, I think I got the wrong one. If you mm. can imagine what it looks like. Yeah. Like, I, I think I got the wrong popcorn book. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was not expecting that to see on my feed. 
Did you ever get that? No. No. Is it too weird for you? Do you freak? It, it's it's definitely weird for me. Yeah, I saw. I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna skip this one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for the Deadpool pocket buckets. I wonder if they're gonna go fun, or they're gonna make fun of other things. I think that'll be funny. That 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 will definitely be. Uh... Well worth it. I actually said to my wife when um, they released it at CinemaCon and they were posting it on Instagram, I was like, July 26th, I don't care what the hell we're doing that night, we are going to the premiere of Deadpool because I need one of these popcorn buckets. That's, what I told That's my the sister. only reason I need to go that night. <laughs> I told my sister, save the date. I know you, you and Shelby can come down. We all got to watch this movie together. We need to. <laughs> When I saw like the Super Bowl, like the commotion when like yep. officially like the release day and stuff, like okay, we need to see this ne- yeah. this day. I don't care what you're doing, we need to. <laughs> and the fact that everyone at CinemaCon had positive things to say about it, there was not a single post I saw that was a negative review or a negative like even even the reviews that weren't perfect didn't have anything bad to say. There Wait, so like, they were saw the movie? Well, no, they saw it was ten minutes were released at CinemaCon. Oh yeah, oh, and okay, they basically were saying like this is ex- this is like back to the days of peak Marvel. Um, the worst I saw was I can't remember where I saw it or who posted it, but it was on Instagram, and someone was like, "This looks like a great film. I'm definitely going to go see it." but I'm apprehensive about the uh, style that it was shot or something like something like that, where something small there's people who are like, who don't like uh, clone wars because of the art style. And I'm like, but the story is so much better than the art style. Can't you look past the art style? I look past it when I was apprehensive. Like I wasn't going to be glue on me. He grew on me. I liked it. Yeah. The, The uh, yeah, oh this this seems like this is gonna make a good third movie. Yeah, like this Deadpool is actually like would be a good trilogy, honestly. Definitely. On that note, I've got to get to bed. I've got a side job in the morning, but uh, really appreciate you coming on, Alex, and yes. can't wait to see all the news that we're gonna get in the next week. Well, Have a great night, everyone. Have a great it's night, been everyone. An absolute pleasure. Peace. See ya.